I wholeheartedly welcome all of you all to this virtual lecture series, which is funded by uh, Shastri Indo-Canadian Institute Conference and Lecture Series Grant. So this year, the lecture series has been a planned by ILNU on the broad theme of artificial intelligence and legal regime, addressing the issues of ethics, transparency, ju justice administration, and privacy. So as no good work can ever be begin without uh, the blessings from the Almighty. So we'll start with uh, the prayer and then we'll move ahead. So uh, with this note, I would like to introduce uh, to you our panel for today. That's the virtual dais uh, for today, today's inaugural session. So today for the inaugural session, we have with us a uh, Dr. Prachi Kaul, Director Shastri Indo-Canadian Institute, our uh, Dr. Anup K. Singh, Director General Nirma University, Dr. P. N. Tekwani, Dean, Faculty of Doctoral Studies and Research, Nirma University. Then we have our uh, Dr. Madhuri Parikh, Dean and Director, Institute of Law, Nirma University. And uh, as uh, we are plan as we have planned a virtual lecture series, so it is going to span over a period of two days, that is 19th and 20th. And we have two sessions planned for each day. So 19th morning session is going to address upon the theme of issues of ethics and morality in artificial intelligence. So for the first session, we have as moderator, uh, Mr. Kushal Nandwani, the assistant professor at Institute of Law. And uh, as panelists, we have Professor Luke Stark, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Media and Information Studies at the University of West Ontario. Uh, Dr. Abbas Puran Hashmi, President, Canadian Institute of International Law, Expertise, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And in the Indian speakers and the Indian panelists, we have Mr. Neeraj Sinha, who's the senior advisor to Niti Aayog, the think tank of India, and Mr. Tushar Bhatnagar, scientist, AI co-founder and CEO of Alpha. The second session is on the 19th is planned at 6.30 p.m. and uh, which is on the broad theme of big data and data privacy opportunities and risk. Uh, the session would be moderated by my uh, co-program coordinator, Mr. Amit Kumar Kashyap. Uh, for the Can uh, Canadian panelist for the session is Professor Nicholas Ver uh, Vermees. Uh, he's the assistant director of the Cyber Justice Lab and vice dean of the Faculty of Law, University of Montreal. And in the Indian speaker and the Indian panelists, we have Mr. Swapnil Bangali, General Counsel of MNLU Mumbai and Director, Center for Technology Law. The third session is going to be on 20th March uh, morning, 8.30 a.m. on Artificial Intelligence and Justice Administration. Uh, in the panel, we have a Sebastian Lafrance, a Crown Counsel and Prosecutor, Public Prosecution Services of Canada. Pablo Sanz Bayon, he's the Professor of Law School of Comillas uh, uh, Pontificial University, Madrid, Spain. And as the Indian panelist, we have uh, Dr. G.R. Raghavendra, who is the Joint Secretary, Department of Justice, Ministry of Law and Justice, Government of India. The session would be moderated by Dr. John Winterdeek. He is the full professor of criminology in the Department of Economics, Justice and Policy Studies, Montreal University, Canada. 
the fourth and the uh, concluding session would be uh, in at 7:30 pm uh, on 20th of march addressing upon the issues of accountability responsibility transparency in artificial intelligence and uh, i would be moderating that session and uh, in the panel we have uh, dr gregor wolverine professor at the university of calgary's coming school of medicine and in the indian uh, speaker we have mr zameer nathani who is the senior vice president and general counsel ufo movies india private limited on this note uh, i would now like to invite our uh, dean and director dr madhuri parik ma'am to propose the welcome address thank you darona a uh, very good morning to all the dignitaries participants and faculty delegates uh, to this event respected dr anup k singh director general of nirmal university dr preeti kaul director of shastri indo canadian institute dr p n tekwani dean faculty of doctor studies and research at nirmal university my faculty colleague mr amit kashyap and mr aruna jafar assistant professor Uh, at Institute of Law, Nirmal University, and coordinators of this uh, talk series on AI and law, uh, uh, participants from the institute, outside the institutes, all my faculty colleagues, I welcome you all to the inaugural ceremony of two days uh, lecture series on topic of artificial intelligence and legal design, addressing issues of ethics, justice, administration, privacy, and transparency, organized by Institute of Law. under the shastri conference and lecture series grant at the outset i express my sincere thanks to dr prachi for uh, facilitated facilitating us with this grant to conduct such a nice event this lecture series mainly focusing on four themes issues of ethics and morality in ai big data and data privacy opportunity and risk ai and justice administration accountability responsibility and transparency issues in ai the discussion on these topics will be really helpful and it is very relevant in looking to the present issues ethical and legal issues associated with ai it is true that by integrating ai into new initiatives like policy making or uh, generating data driven insights and formulate better protocol to promote social justice in clinical practice but along with it there are certain issues associated with it like uh, the main issues which are deliberated are the uh, the algorithmic transparency then the cyber security no vulnerabilities unfairness bias and discrimination lack of uh, transparency legal personhood issues and another main issue which is discussed nowadays is that it should be free from the bias of its creator that is another issue which is uh, discussed and deliberated a lot in the uh, in the field of law so these are data privacy is another such issue so looking to this uh, emerging uh, area wherein the law has lot of things to intervene and uh, uh, ai can also play a major role but how to make this system free from biases and how to make it more sound legally and ethically uh, looking to that the deliberations that will be taking place in this two days lecture series will be really helpful in providing us the better understanding about the ai and law i am very happy to share that institute of law offers a course on ai and law and this discussion will be really helpful to those students apart from it the dedicated research center is working which promotes research in this area so i must thank uh, dr prachi for uh, granting this fund it will be really helping us in uh, in our course in our uh, in our deliberations on this uh, issue and i think we will we'll look forward for some uh, concrete outcome after this two uh, days lecture series i look forward for long association with sastri indo canadian institute for our future initiatives as well i thank you all for remaining present and making this event successful and wish you all the best uh, uh, my all faculty colleagues uh, for the uh, two days uh, lectures and the fruitful outcome of it thank you all Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words. Uh, they really mean a lot to us, and it would keep up our spirits across all the lectures. Now, I would like to uh, invite my colleague and co-program uh, coordinator, uh, Mr. Amit Kumar Kashyap, to share a brief overview on all the four themes and the general theme of the lecture series. Hello, I hope I'm audible. 
so uh, good morning all dignitaries so artificial intelligence uh, as a topic uh, has already uh, made a swift inroad in the policy regime across the world and is undoubtedly a game changer so uh, looking into the need of addressing this through policy legal and interdisciplinary aspects in sectors like finance healthcare judiciary and administration institute of law nirma university has taken this initiative to organize under the support of shastri indo canadian institute uh, through the funding from shastri conference and lecture series grant so we are holding this event titled artificial intelligence and legal regime addressing issues of ethics justice administration privacy and transparency so this is this is a two days event so we have four uh, themes which uh, in which the canadian as well as indian experts will be uh, sharing their thoughts and addressing the issues so first theme that we have is issue of ethics and morality in artificial intelligence that is today uh, 9 am and this is going to be very interesting uh, because we have speakers two speakers from canada professor luke stark who is from university of western ontario we have dr abbas kurshami who is president of canadian institute for our international uh, law and expertise toronto we have indian expert who is a big shot already uh, uh, mr deeraj sinha who has been a policy maker senior advisor neeti ayog we have uh, mr tushar bhatnagar who is a scientist and an entrepreneur who has been working in this area of artificial intelligence and law so this first session is completely interdisciplinary uh, which will set uh, the ground for further discussions on artificial intelligence and law second session we have again today that is uh, 19th march 6:30 pm so we will also be sharing uh, the link for this session in the first session also so that everybody can join comfortably we have canadian speaker professor nicolas uh, virmeni uh, he is a, a director as well as uh, assistant uh, professor in university of montreal and also is the dean of the faculty of law and uh, is also holding a cyber justice laboratory so uh, indian speaker we have uh, miss sharda balaji who is partner of novo juris a technology practicing firm in bangalore uh, we also have Dr. Swapnil Bangali, who is director of Center of Information Communication Technology and Law, Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. On day two, uh, that will start by 9 a.m. on 20th March. We have uh, Mr. Sebastian Lafrance, who is a Crown Counsel. He is uh, practicing in Canada uh, for almost around 15 years and is also been uh, the member of uh, judiciary in Canada. and also is serving recently as uh, the prosecution in the prosecution services of canada we have professor pablo uh, bayon who is a professor of law uh, from pontifical uh, university madrid and also we have indian speaker uh, mr g r raghavendran who is joint secretary and uh, department of justice ministry of law uh, government of india then the last uh, session that we have is accountability responsibility transparency uh, issues in ai on 20th march 730 in this we will uh, talk about uh, that am i responsible when i'm using ai or are the organizations responsible so uh, this will be addressed by professor grigor volbring who is a professor of university of calgary he will be specially uh, taking this area of health sector and uh, disability sector to put forth his arguments on whether artificial intelligence is responsible or not and then from indian speakers we have mr zameer nathani who is a senior vice president and general counsel ufo movies india limited mumbai he has been uh, practicing in the area of ips and artificial intelligence for last 15 years so i hope that all these sessions uh, that we have organized with the support of sikki would be very fruitful and uh, would be giving a uh, hello you are audible yeah. so so it uh, so it will be uh, basically uh, giving a uh, 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 
Hello, is it audible? I mean, you are audible. Yeah. So it will be giving a, a base for all of us uh, to have research and uh, uh, develop a further studies on uh, artificial intelligence and law. So outcome of this program would be that we'll come up uh, with a booklet that will be submitted to Niti Ayog as well as to Siki. And we will also have a, a videograph that would be maintained uh, for all the sessions uh, that we have. Uh, so we will be editing it so that we can have a one hour uh, video wherein all the gist of the discussions that we have can be clubbed together. So this will be the outcome of, of this program. Thank you very much. Over to Taruna. Um, thank you, sir, for giving us an overview of the program. Now, uh, without any further delay, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Prachi Kol from Siki to share her words of wisdom with us. Thank you so much. Uh, very good morning. And if uh, we have colleagues joining in from Canada side or any other part of the uh, world, good evening to you all. And uh, it's a delight that uh, I'm part of this inaugural session, which is uh, so very important in today's context. Uh, my greetings to uh, the Director General Anu Anuchi, uh, Tekwadi ji, and uh, uh, of course, the Dean uh, of the department. Uh, and congratulations to the coordinating team, uh, including Amit. Uh, this is uh, an excellent initiative that uh, you have taken up and uh, you have put together this uh, wonderful program. Thank you so much for sharing the outline and uh, the details uh, that will go into the program. Uh, I could uh, hear that it's an impressive list of speakers who are going to enrich the uh, capacity and capability of our young, uh, not just young researchers and students, but also the faculty and people like us who have understood AI uh, in, a, in a wide manner, but there's still so much to learn in this segment, uh, which remain unlearned, which remained, uh, you know, uh, out of our purview or out of our uh, knowledge. So it was uh, very good and it is very timely that this event being organized. Uh, congratulations once again. Uh, Nirmal University has been a great associate of Shastri Institute ever since uh, it has joined the member council of the Sh uh, Shastri Indo-Canadian Institute. It's uh, not, uh, I would say, uh, not a long-standing relationship, but in a very short time, uh, we have developed and nurtured our relations so effectively that every year there is some other other fellow that receives the award or uh, there is some activity happening. So the vibrancy and the credentials of the faculty members is remarkable in terms of uh, building uh, such wonderful proposal that they win over the award from Shasti. It's very, very competitive as uh, you would be knowing and those who, present, who are present here uh, if you're aware of Shastri Institute, it's wonderful. If you're not, we are a binational organization mandated by both the governments. In India, we are mandated by Ministry of Education, a Department of Higher Education. And uh, the mandate is to build connections between India and Canada uh, academically and uh, any other way possible for that matter. How we do build up uh, you know, these relations are, can be defined in two major ways. Uh, first is that uh, we provide financial assistance uh, to our institutions, its members, students, faculty, to uh, get in touch with uh, uh, Canadian uh, affiliates and Canadian faculty and departments and uh, institutions that are part of our network uh, at the Canadian end. And similarly, Canadians to connect with India and apply for fellowships, grants, awards, and opportunity like Amit has done. Uh, so these are the opportunities. These are the opportunities that bring some financial assistance to you. Uh, Indians can go to Canada and be affiliated with any university for that matter that are on board, whether it is University of uh, Cal Calgary or Montreal or UBC or Toronto, and uh, work together with an affiliate whose interest matches to theirs. Similarly, there are program for undergrad students like. Uh, internship programs, which are for undergrad students, 
uh, students from India can go to Canada for three months' time, and this is all paid by Shastri Institute. It's a great commitment around uh, 10 lakhs for, for three months, and uh, this is just an example. And uh, uh, similarly, Canadian students can, can come down to your campus. So focus here has now been shifting not just from India to Canada, but reverse mobility as well. So try and explore with your affiliates there in Canada if they want to send out. Uh, Canadians are not so exploratory, uh, exploratory in terms of uh, uh, exploring other geographies. And uh, they, are, uh, they are fine with, within Canada. Uh, and if they move out, it's uh, very close in the periphery, whether they will go to the France or USA or uh, Mexico. So they are not uh, very adventurous as Indian students are. So if you want to involve them, uh, do connect with your uh, affiliates in Canada and assure them that they will be well taken care of. Try to have an arrangement by which you can have more mobility and more presence of uh, Canadian fellows and students on your campus as well. And Shastri is there to handhold on this. Uh, similarly, there are a program for graduate students, which are master's and PhD program or post postdoctoral fellows fellowships, which enables your fellows to go in Canada and Canadian fellows to come down to your campuses. Similarly, awards were established to young faculty, uh, which is called Mobility Grant. You can develop a course, you can co-teach a course, you can uh, offer a series of lectures or workshop to um, uh, students, and uh, you can even do a small research project there. Uh, similarly, your affiliates can be with you in your campus and teach a class, uh, or you can go teach a class with any Canadian uh, faculty here at your campus. And the need of the R is to build our campuses global from global perspective. So we need to have that uh, uh, flow of ideas, flow of uh, thoughts coming into our campuses and uh, uh, building the knowledge that can be relatable for the global society. So that is one way to see the uh, you know, uh, our institutions in India to and Canada to help and uh, assist in financially to uh, to make these things possible. The other uh, way uh, that is all the more important is providing a network to uh, outreach. And uh, all these uh, financial assistance and support is only viable when we have a contact with people. If you don't have contact, you won't go uh, you won't be, you know, uh, seen as a collaborator. So your worth, your credentials are uh, very well established when you join the member council of the institute. And uh, we take pride in saying that Nirma is a wonderful university coming up in the private sector. I would say that one of the best and leading uh, in different domains, uh, different domain of knowledge. So uh, that is the another uh, uh, way. Uh, how we, the Shastri Institute, provides a platform uh, wherein you can interact with Canadian institutions and try to understand compatibility and differences and work on those. So this is another way to uh, provide assistance to our member institutions. Uh, there are many other things that I can talk about the Institute, but it is important that the deliberations of the event and the activity go on. So I congratulate you once again, and uh, I wish you all the very best because uh, I'm sure there is going to be involvement of young students and, uh, and young faculty. Uh, this is a domain that needs more attention, and uh, very pleased to share with you that uh, uh, this artificial intelligence uh, is something that we are taking up very aggressively in our programming. Very soon, in a couple of months' time, you will see the introducing a cluster on uh, cluster on uh, artificial intelligence and um, uh, robotics uh, and data analysis, uh, data mining. So this will allow you to bring in a different perspective on AI, including the one that you have taken up. And uh, we are sure that you will uh, make use of those opportunities that would become available when we introduce the cluster. Uh, similarly, you know, we a cluster have been introduced uh, um, last week on um, uh, on 15th of March, wherein we have introduced agriculture as a thematic area, and we are building up uh, connections with all the major stakeholders and bringing them together to work in and align their 
uh, initiative. So the same approach uh, of bringing stakeholders together would be adopted while introducing the AI cluster. Uh, with this, I would uh, wish you all the very best. Take care of yourself and uh, have great deliberations. Thank you for having me today. Thank you very much, uh, Prachi ma'am, for your kind words and for uh, enlightening us and encouraging us that how wonderful this particular grant is and what all we can contribute to our institute as well as to the society by virtue of this particular grant. Uh, now, uh, without any further delay, I would like to invite our Director General, Dr. Anup K. Singh Sir, for his presidential address. Thank you. Uh, good morning to all, Prachi ji, Professor Parikh. Professor Tekwani, experts from Canada and India, and dear students. We have uh, today a very pertinent uh, topic for discussion, AI, ethics, and morality. The concept of uh, AI came into existence in early 60s, and uh, there was a proof of the concept, however, it took almost uh, 50 years for AI to take uh, place. So it takes time from uh, theory to technology. And if we look into AI today, we would not say that it has matured. Still, it is uh, in its uh, early stage. So if uh, we visualize AI 50 years down the line, then we are going to have a very, very different world. Now, when technology develops so much, but human beings are not going to change. Human beings after 50 years are going to remain the same. So issues of ethics and morality, they are not going to change. And if we don't ask the issues related to ethics and values today, then AI is going to be quite monstrous 50 years down the line because AI has tremendous power. For example, uh, if uh, there is a diagnosis of uh, X-ray of uh, joints by a radiologist and by a trained uh, AI program, the accuracy of the program is uh, much better than average uh, radiologist, right? So there is a logic into it. And when there is a logic into it, then somebody is feeding the logic into it. Somebody is training logic into it. So if uh, we are unable to feed the right kind of logic into the AI, AI can be quite monstrous, right? And this is why it is uh, very important to, dis to discuss these issues now onwards. I'll give you another example. Uh, in one country, they have a very strong AI to recognize uh, faces and to decide based on the face analysis that uh, who is going to be a threat to the society. Now, the accuracy of AI is pretty good. However, when uh, the statistics is taken into account, it is around 1%. Now, anybody would say that, look, uh, there is great difference between 0% and 1%. So AI is doing great job. At the same time, AI is also catching wrong people and uh, creating a lot of problem for them. For example, we are training AI and uh, we put uh, a logic into AI that those people who wear caps, right, they can be a threat to society, right? AI does not understand anything. Somebody is feeding that logic into it. And therefore, how do we feed logic into AI that becomes very, very important? And uh, Coming to, coming to, you know, ethics and values, we think that ethics and values are logical matters. We think that, you know, they are based on rationality, but that is not the case. Ethics 
and values are as much uh, emotional matters as rational matters and therefore the emotional aspect of uh, ethics and uh, morality cannot be captured by ai so how do we how do we address this dilemma okay it has been it has been proven that you know we are very very moral towards the people whom we like and whom we know but we can also be quite uh, anti moral against the people who are not known to us who are not part of our uh, group so therefore and because either we don't have any emotion for us or we have negative emotion for uh, them so so you know how do we handle this situation right how do we feed this kind of uh, emotional aspect into ai we don't know right however if we do continuous uh, research uh, then probably we can uh, come out with a framework where we can do something about it there are so many so many you know theories and perspectives on uh, morality which perspective we are going to use to train uh, ai so so the, these are very very uh, challenging issues and uh, we have to discuss them and eventually you know we have to come out with the certain conclusions that uh, what is the right way of uh, addressing ethical and moral issues in uh, applying uh, ai and i'm sure that uh, the discussions that uh, we are going to have today and tomorrow would uh, shed light on these issues thank you very much thank you so much sir uh, now uh, because of the time constraints uh, i would quickly like to invite our uh, director of research dr uh, tekwani uh, to share his views on this whole theme and the whole program uh, thank you madam i understand uh, that uh, now we are very eager to listen to the experts so i will just take uh, only a couple of minutes first of all uh, uh, congratulations uh, to dr madhuri parik and the entire team of uh, organizing this particular uh, workshop uh, webinar and the topics are very apt like ethics morality big data ai accountability and transparency is uh, director general sir said that uh, ai is the future and then the power will lie with the people who have the data so using the data applying the ai and with ethical and lawful use of this technology will help us to solve the problems of human kind so that is uh, that should be our motto and in this line only the institute has taken this step now when i see 113 participants have already joined so it shows that how interesting the topic is and all the credit goes to the institute by organizing this one and this is the power of social media also where we put our uh, session details and then people join so it is very good another thing is uh, prachi madam we are very much thankful to you and uh, from on behalf of university we would definitely like to have the longer and longer linkage with uh, sici and uh, we are sure that uh, in future also we will be getting this opportunities to arrange more and more such programs and also more and more our faculty members will get benefit from various schemes of sastri indo canadian institute uh madam uh, prachi madam our uh, university uh, believes in quality and uh, that is quite evident from all the programs which are organized by the university so we will be you know standing through all the expectations of sici in organizing this programs and using the grants of sici more effectively in a purposeful manner now with this grant not only that we have strengthened our existing linkages with canadian universities but as i understand from the interactions with dr madhuri madam 
that now we could establish new linkages with the Canadian universities also, and that is commendable. It helps and it serves the purpose also. So uh, uh, lastly, I would like to uh, urge all the participants that please take maximum benefit out of this program, that when the sessions are going on, be attentive and take maximum, you know, uh, at home exercises also. And in long run, you uh, set a good linkage with the team of Nirma University, as well as these foreign experts who are going to uh, take the sessions and try to make the sessions interactive also when time comes, opportunity is given for question answers. The participants can make use of their time in these two days in a more effective way. So it will be beneficial for them also. So with this, uh, under the great leadership of our Director General, Dr. Anup Singh, sir, we are very much thankful to Dr. Prachi, madam, for sponsoring this program. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. And I would love, now like to take this opportunity that without your support and Anup sir's support, as well as Madhuri ma'am's support, we wouldn't have actually been able to frame this particular program and submit it for approval to Prachi, ma'am, of course. So uh, on this note, now I would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to uh, our panelists on the dais today, uh, our DG sir, Dr. Anup K. Singh, and our uh, director of research, uh, Dr. Tekwani, uh, dean and director, Dr. Madhuri Parikh, and Dr. Prachi for joining us for this inaugural session and uh, setting the st stepping stone towards the whole program today. And we look forward to more such conversations together either in physical mode or virtual mode, because we have learned the new reality now. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And I request all the participants to join our first session, which is just about to start. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today in the inauguration.